Okay, good morning everyone. So this will be our laboratory activity for friction. So our objectives for this uh, laboratory activity is to differentiate the types of friction and explain the importance of friction in our daily lives. The material that we are going to use it is the online laboratory simulations from FET Colorado. See, this is the FET interactive simulations. So if you want to go back to this after our presentation, our uh, discussion, you can look for the link provided on this slide. So we need to look into the different parts of the simulation that we are going to use. So there are four tabs, introduction, friction, force graphs, robot moving company. So what we are going to use on this simulation is the friction tab. So you have here, uh, you need to be familiarized on the buttons or functions of this uh, simulations. So here we have uh, the walls, which we are going to remove later. Then we have here the angle ramp. Then you can control this uh, position of our box from negative 10 to positive 10 position. So later I will uh, give some of the positions that we are going to use. Then we have the angle of the ramp. We can adjust the angle based on what is needed on our activity. Then as you can see, we can see here the vector forces. Let's take note that a force is a vector which has magnitude and direction. So we have here the normal force, which is in yellow. And then we have here the force due to gravity, which is in blue. So we can have the applied force here. Then we have here the static friction. You can adjust the static friction present within the box and the wood. This is the wood plank. Or we can adjust also the kinetic friction or the coefficient of kinetic friction at the bottom. So we can also adjust the mass of our object. So for this activity, we are going to use 100 kilograms for our mass. And we are going to use the gravitational pull or the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Then here, uh, the material that we are going to use for our ramp is the wood. And then later on, I will click the sum of forces so that we can see what will be the resultant forces or the resultant vector for this. So as I, I mentioned a while ago, we are going to remove the walls so that whatever happens to our box will be simulated properly. Okay. So let's focus on what we are going to deal with when we go to the simulation. So the first one is that we need to answer uh, the following questions. Once I am going to manipulate the uh, simulations, you need to take note of the answers for the following questions. So we have the first question, why does the small red friction arrow point uphill? Then the second question is that, does the box slide under these conditions? So you need to explain why does the box slide or not? Then number three, what happens to the direction of the red friction arrow? And then number four, why does the box did not move even if the applied force was increased to 200 newtons? Next question, question number five, what does the green vector represent? So later on, you will see some uh, arrows so you need to look into what those arrows represent then number six you need to write an equation using the applied force 
FA or F sub A to the frictional force F sub F and to the total force or F net. Then in number seven, you need to answer question, what happens to the magnitude of the normal force as the angle of the incline increases? Then for the last two, you need to complete the table. What, what angle does the box begin to slide? So we have different coefficient of frictions, coefficient of static friction that we are going to use. We have 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 0.9. So we need to determine at which angle will the box begin to slide at different static coefficient of static friction. And then on number nine, we need to answer what is the relationship between coefficient of friction and the angle at which an object begins to slide. So let's move on now to the simulation. So the first thing to do is to remove the walls. So we click X and then we place our ramp first on the normal incline. So there's no angle of inclination for this. So let's focus on the box that we have. So let's reset all first so that we can start from scratch. So let's focus on our box. So we have here Fn, which is the normal force, and Fg, which is the force due to gravity. So the inclined plane that we are going to use here is the wood. And then we have to click the sum of forces to generate the vector sum. So if we're going to apply force, for example, we apply 120. So you will notice that it's not moving. So if we're going to push it more, so that's the time that the box move. So that's not what we are going to do. I'm just uh, playing around first so that we are familiarizing on the buttons. So let's reset again. So we need to place our inclined plane on an angle equal to 20 degrees. Right? So that's 20 degrees. Our angle is 20 degrees. We place our object at position 6, positive 6. Please take a look on what are the vectors present. So we have here Fn, Ff, and Fg. So we're going to return our box on the level. You will notice that if I'm going to push the box at 200, what is happening? Let's try 500. Okay, let's retain the object. Let's click the sum of forces. Again, let's have 400. Let's increase 500. Okay. 
So now we place our object at 6 meters. Right? Let's take note that the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So if you're going to notice, the inclination gives us an inclined part of our normal force because the normal force here is perpendicular to the surface here. This one, the wood, and not on the ground. And let's take note that Fg is always perpendicular to the ground. It's always moving or pointing downward, F sub G. Now, let's look into the table that we are going to complete. So we need to have a static coefficient of friction of 0.1. So here I have static friction mu sub s. We need to have this equal to 0 0.1. We need to determine what will happen on the box. So we need to place it back. And let's stop. Sorry, selecting the object. Place it again at 6. So we have a static friction at 1. Then we will determine at what degrees or at what angle will the slide, uh, will the box start to slide. Okay, let's repeat. Again, let's place our object at 6 meters. And the static friction is at 0.1. The coefficient of static friction is at 0.1. So, at what angle? Okay, now let's return and have 0.3 as our coefficient of static friction. Here, we will look into at what angle will the box start to slide. Now let's have our coefficient of static friction to be equal to 
Now, let's have our coefficient of static friction equal to 0 0.9. Still, we have the same mass for the object, which is 100 kilograms. And our acceleration due to gravity, still we are on Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's identify the angle at which our box will start to slide. Again, let's have it. Okay. Okay. So let's repeat. Let's look again on if we applied force. So we have a frictional force pointing on this direction. And then the applied force, which is 200 newtons. If you're going to notice, they are almost the same. If we're going to make it 300, Still, the amount of frictional force is almost similar or equal to the force applied. So let's go back to the presentation. So let's take note of again of the questions that you need to answer. Why does the small red friction arrow point uphill? Does the box slide under uh, this condition? What happens to the direction of the red uh, arrow? or the red friction arrow when it begins to slide, then why does the box did not move even if it was applied? Uh, there is an applied force and it was increased by 200 newtons. And then what does the green vector represent? And you need to write the equation using applied force, frictional force, and the force, and the total force, or the F net. And then you have what happens to the magnitude of the normal force as the angle of inclination increases. Then we also uh, filled up at what angle will the box begins to slide. And you need to determine the relationship of the coefficient of friction to the angle at which the object begins to slide. So to generalize our activity, you need to give us the importance of having friction on interacting objects. Then as a last activity, you need to 
answer the problem using GRESA, the given required to find the equation solution in your final answer. Let's take note that you need to express your final answer in three significant figures. The question is, Sky is trying to make her 70 kilogram St. Bernard go out the back door, but the dog refuses to walk. If the coefficient of sliding friction between the dog and the floor is 0.5, how hard must Sky push in order to move the dog with a constant speed? Okay. So that's our laboratory activity for friction.